Hi everybody, this is Kent from Man About Tools, and today we're making new concrete garden box panels that are thinner, lighter, stronger, and faster to cast. This is part four of my series on making these reinforced concrete garden box panels. These panels have pipe cast in the corner so they can be joined or pinned together to make long-lasting rot-proof garden boxes. In my last episode, I looked at making the panels lighter using a few lightweight concrete formulations. The panels I cast were designed for traditional Portland-based cement, and it has some limitations. The panels needed to be a certain thickness to have enough strength around the pipes. I started looking for ways to make the panels lighter by altering the concrete, but I think it makes just as much sense to find a way to make them thinner. So just use less concrete. There's another type of concrete that's based on a different cement called CSA. It's super high strength and you can cast it much thinner. It sets up very fast and it gets stronger faster than Portland-based cement. And this, I think, is yet another way to make the panels lighter. I still like the basic look and shape of the panels, so I made some modifications to the form design so these thinner panels still link together in the same fashion as the previous ones. I also will be using a smaller diameter pipe in the corners, and that will require a smaller diameter steel rod to join them. Rebar is too thick, but there's some alternatives, and I'll get to that a bit later. So here's the modified design and how I made these new forms. The base is made from a 2x10 with a thin beveled inset. The ends and sides are made from a 2x4. The ends and sides have a peg made from wooden dowel to hold a piece of plastic water pipe in place. There's three main parts to the form. The base, two identical ends, and two identical sides. When filled with CSA concrete, a galvanized wire mesh is laid in for additional strength. These thinner panel forms are constructed in a very similar manner as the ones I built in part two of this series. I start by cutting a two by 10 to length then ripping it to width on my table saw. This one will make a 48 inch long panel. I cut these to length with a miter saw, but a square and a circular saw will also work well. To make these new panels the same width and height as the previous Portland cement versions, I ripped the two x 10 down to eight inches wide. I use a portable table saw for this. A guide and a circular saw will also work. The forms I'm making are for three different lengths to cast a 48, a 36, and a 24 inch panel. The drawings have dimensions for each. This offers some variation depending on the size garden box you want. I rip both edges on the table saw to give me a square corner on both sides. After the base is ripped and trimmed to its final length, I'll lay out the end cuts and inset location. I have a full set of plans available for download on my website, manabouttools.com, and there's a link in the upper right or in the description below. I'll remove the corner pieces with a jigsaw. You could use a handsaw or a bandsaw for these cuts instead. A jigsaw blade can wander, so I check the cut with a square. The inset is an angled piece attached to the base, mainly for decorative purposes. It's not functionally required, but I like the look. Thin plywood can be used to make this. I rip these at 30 degrees on my table saw and cut to length on the miter saw. You could personalize your panels here by adding an oval or circles or a logo or anything you want. 
Just be sure that whatever you use has a beveled edge so you can remove the panels from the base after casting. I attach the inset with glue and weigh it down until the glue dries. If you use short screws instead of glue, you can change the inset design in future castings. The sides are made from a 2x4. Like the base, they are cut to length on the miter saw, then ripped down to width on the table saw. The sides are laid out and the hole for the dowels drilled. I use a small bench top drill press, but you could carefully freehand this or use a drill guide. You want the pipe holder pegs to be at right angles or 90 degrees to the sides. I like to drill pilot holes for the assembly screws at this time. It makes assembly easier later. To make the ends, I use a length of 2x4 that's already ripped to width for the three pieces that make up the end assembly. These are cut on the miter saw. One of these blocks I take to the drill press for the dowel hole. I'll then drill the pilot holes for assembly with an eighth bit. Dowels are cut to length and glued and tapped into these holes. I assemble the ends with glue and screws, checking that everything lines up well and is square. The ends can also be made with two pieces instead of three, if you're okay drilling the dowel hole into end grain. Either method works. With all the parts of the form ready, I assemble it and test the fit. I use self-drilling cabinet screws for this. I number each form and all the parts so I can reassemble it again the same way. I remove the screws and disassemble the form and apply two coats of food grade mineral oil. This oil is sold as butcher's block or cutting board oil. 
You can also buy it in feed stores for about half the price. I liberally apply it with a cloth. It doesn't take long and each coat took about 10 minutes per form. While this is drying or soaking in, I'll cut the plastic pipe to length. And I cut a section of galvanized wire fence to reinforce the center section of the panel. This will be laid in the concrete once it's poured. Now I reassemble the forms with the pipes on the dowel pins. I add some latex caulking to make the forms watertight and to add a small fillet in the corners. I cover the pipes with a cloth and spray the form with vegetable non-stick cooking spray. I'm using CSA mortar mix for these thinner forms. In North America, the Rapid Set brand can be found at Home Depot. To make the concrete flow and pour like water, I'll be using a plasticizer. This mortar mix sets up very fast, so to give me more time and to slow this down, I'm going to add a small amount of citric acid powder. This powder can be found in most health food stores or at a grocery store in the canning section. In addition, I'll add a third of an ounce of glass fiber. This is the manufacturer's recommended amount. Here's the proportions for the mix. A 55 pound bag of CSA mortar mix, five quarts of water, a bag of plasticizer, and about two ounces of citric acid powder. I add the water to my mixing pail and dissolve the citric acid powder. Then I add the plasticizer and dissolve it too. Then I add about a third of the bag of mortar mix and some glass fiber. I'll blend this until smooth, adding more dry mortar mix slowly. I set the forms over sawhorses and level them in both directions. One batch will fill two 36 inch forms or a 48 and a 24. I fill each form with the concrete mix and vibrate the forms with a recip saw without the blade to bring any bubbles to the surface. When the concrete begins to thicken, I lay in the galvanized wire grid and push it into the center with a trowel. I mix one final batch to fill the last 48 and 24 inch forms. Laying in wire grid as it solidifies.
I wet the forms when the concrete hardens and begins to dry on the surface and a white spotty haze forms. I do this water curing for about an hour. After an hour, the panels can be removed from the forms. Now the screws can be removed and I can gently pull off the sides. and then each end. And I can free the panel from the base with a little help from a paint scraper. And here's a 48 inch panel coming out of the form. The newly cast panels should now be at half their full strength. They will reach near maximum strength in about four weeks if kept wet. The latex caulk can be easily scraped off with a putty knife and the form parts wiped clean with a rag. So I really like how these concrete panels came out of the forms. It's the nicest concrete I think I've ever poured. The original Portland-based concrete forms, the thicker ones are about 50 pounds for a 36 inch panel. These new ones are only 30 pounds. So pretty significant savings in uh, weight and in concrete. I cut electrical fence posts into one foot lengths with my reciprocating saw. A hacksaw or a cutoff blade in my angle grinder would work too. And I sprayed these bars with some rust paint. I level a spot in my garden and set the panels in place. I check for square and level, then drive in the bars through the corners and into the ground to secure them. I repeat this on each corner to complete the garden box. For deeper boxes, you can stack and alternate the panels if you like. You will need longer pins for this. So a couple of things as I wrap up this episode in the series. I didn't know that this was going to be a series, but this is how it goes. The two previous form designs work well, so keep making panels with those if you have them. If you want the panels lighter, then there's quite a few alternative concrete formulations available that work in those first two forms. I only covered three in the last episode, but I'm sure there's many more. So maybe there'll be a part 3.5 in this series, I'm not sure, we'll see. With these new panels, I'm not sure if any wire reinforcing grid is required at all. The CSA concrete might be strong enough without it, so it might just be habit that I add grid. But if a panel was ever to crack or break, the wire would at least hold it together so it still functions. Please leave a comment with your thoughts or suggestions. I'm amazed at the wealth of knowledge out there, and I so appreciate everyone who has shared it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.